squad. So this month I took on the bold task of trying to learn how to draw pixel art. I say trying because, well, yeah. <laughs> like I've said before, all the art in the game up until this point has been drawn by an actual artist. But since continuing down that path would likely see my bank account go commit die, I decided to take matters into my own hands. I was like, pixel art can't be that difficult. You just got a little pixel here, a little pixel here. You just Slap them together? Art. We need to fucking demonetize around this time, boys. That's why this video is sponsored by NordLocker. Somebody say NordLocker. No, 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 we're not at that part yet. Go away. Go to NordLocker.net forward slash rent and get 81% off a three, three, three year plan. plan. Now, shut up, save it for the end of the video. Oh. Fucking Bazza. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah, pixel art. <sighs> a lot harder than it looks. So in this video I'm going to be telling you fuckers a little story of how I went from Pixel Brad to Pixel Chad, from someone who doesn't know how to drill for shit to uh, someone who still doesn't know how to drill for shit. So to figure out what I wanted to drill first, I wrote up a quick little plan for what the game world is going to look like and went from there. The plan is going to be starting in this forest biome area, so I figured that'd be a pretty good place to start. Also, I just like forests because they look cool. I wrote up a plan of what I want the forest to contain as well as grab some examples that I thought looked pretty nice. So by the end of this video, I want the whole forest scene nearing completion and looking smick as humanly possible. I've definitely got my my work cut out for me, so let's whip out the old Wacom Intuos Pen Small CTL 480 and get crack a lacking. I've already got a small amount of art here to go off of, but I'm going to be drawing all of it myself, starting out with this ground sprite. What the fuck is that? Alright, time for attempt number two. Oh god, that's even worse. Nope, go back. After many hours of trial and error, three fucking days to be exact, I finally managed to get it right. It still needs a bit of work, but uh, yeah, she'll be right. It was at this point I learned my first and probably most important lesson. You can't rush art, like that dude from Toy Story once said. Don't ask me how I remember that, because I've got no fucking clue. But the second you try speeding things up and rushing through it is the second the whole thing just falls to shit. So uh, yeah, take your time. So keeping that in mind, the next thing I wanted to tackle was drawing a tree. I started out drawing an oak tree, but then I was like, hey, screw that, pine trees are way cooler. Turns out they're also 10 times harder to draw, so I sorta of dug myself a hole there. Yeah, yeah, not quite my tempo. We'll come back to redrawing this later, but I'm gonna move on for now. Next up, it was time to make a start on the background. I tried drawing up a background hill, the keyword being tried, it hardly resembles one. <laughs> I'll get better, I promise. But since I've now got an element for the background, I needed to make it fit nicely in the game world. To do this, I programmed in a little parallax effect which just makes it look like it's far away and part of the background. Pretty cool. But continuing on I wanted to create a canopy with trees leading up towards it. So to do this I drew up the first tree as well as the canopy that it'll merge into. And after a bit of tweaking around with it I put it in game to see how it'd feel. Eh, yeah nah it looks shit. <laughs> Moving on though. So that's the first layer. I then moved on to creating a couple more background hills as well as try to make the horrendous first hill look a bit better. Now that's looking a lot better than before. From here I went about populating these hills with some more trees and then drawing up some more canopy layers to see if that'd make it look any better. Uh, spoiler, it didn't. I can see this approach working well in a really dense forest, but I had something lighter in mind, so we're just gonna scrap all of this. Oh, that's another two fucking days down the drain. It's like a wise man once said, no matter how much you polish a piece of shit, it's still gonna be a piece of shit. So I opted for a different approach instead, creating each tree individually, and then slapped that into the game. And yeah, that's feeling a lot better. The far background of the scene is looking really bare bones at the moment, so I'm gonna be creating some mountains. Again, I've got no idea how the fuck to draw mountains, so I consulted old mate Google Images, got a little reference page set up, and then got to work. I experimented a bit with the style before moving on to doing a rough sketch of the full mountain range. I did this just to get a sense of scale, it's by no means the final, just a quick little doodle. <laughs> doodle. At this point it's been about two weeks, uh, I know, shocking right, I've hardly got anything to show for it, but to give myself a bit of a break from blindly stumbling my way through the drawing process, I figured I'd do a bit of programming work on the in-game editor. I've got a ton of functionality in mind for it, but we'll start out small for now, just get the basics in and save the more nuanced features for later on. First things first, I made it so that you can move around freely in the editor mode without controlling the player. I then added in some visual elements for controlling slow motion, followed by a list of entities that are currently in the world 
for debug purposes. They can be sorted by either index or category. You'll notice that the categories don't have pretty names because C is a fun language and doesn't have any inbuilt features for type introspection or code generation. Now I know about 90% of you would rather watch paint dry than listen to me ramble about programming, so to cut a long story short, I spent the next few days integrating this bad boy to make these names look pretty, as well as get some data automatically printing to this cool little UI window over here. Very nice. To go on a quick little tangent, I thought I'd focus on really trying to nail a style for the distant mountains. After a solid day of research and fiddling around with the style, I got it looking rather quite nice if I do say so myself. I need to spend a bit of time replicating this across the entirety of the range, but I'll leave that for another day. Directing my focus back to the editor now though, I added in some functionality which allows me to move around objects in game. Not exactly sure why I added this in, uh, it's really no use because I can't actually save any changes I make, but uh, yeah, it's in there now. That's all the basics done for the editor though, I then went about writing up a very basic particle system. Just like the editor, there's a ton more features I need to add to this, but I'm just going to be adding in the very basics for the time being. At least I can play around with a few little particle effects now though. Fucking love particles, I swear to god. Now back to pixel art, uh, this whole scene really isn't looking too good. You've got this big ass tree clipping off the screen, uh, these background trees feel too scuffed and awkward, and there's really not enough contrast between the foreground and background. So I spent a bit of time trying to sort that out, just gain the scale of everything down pat and playing around with a few ideas. I then begun sketching out the final background scene, I'm just scrapping all the previous trees because they look like absolute ass. But after I felt the shapes were looking slick, I went on to detailing the new foreground pine tree. Ah, much better than that old piece of shit. I then worked on fleshing out the background trees and hills a bit more. This whole scene is starting to look, dare I say, somewhat decent. Mm. I've been putting off the mountains for quite a while now, but with the closer background looking a bit better, I spent a good while detailing the rest of the range. It's still a bit sloppy in some areas, but overall it's uh, pretty passable. To give the mountains a bit more zest, I drew up some cute looking clouds, which I then added into the game with a slight little easterly breeze. The hills are still looking a bit bare, so I went about adding in some shrubs and saplings. I also had the idea of putting these small rocks in a separate layer behind the player's feet. I doubt it'll be very noticeable, but uh, hey, who doesn't like the little things? And then to finish off the background elements, I drew up some more trees just so things wouldn't look repetitive in game. I couldn't exactly finish detailing the mid mountain range in time, but I did do a very rough shading pass on it to make it look less scuffed. I could honestly go on forever just iterating and polishing all this, but I'd have got to stop somewhere and call it a day. Overall though, I reckon it's turned out quite well. Now I'd be lying if I said this month was just smooth sailing. The amount of times I nearly yeeted my Wacom Intuos Pen Small CTL 480 through the nearest fucking window was uncountable. Six times. But just like everything in life, if you put in the hours, you're bound to see improvements eventually. No matter how small. I'm a long ways from being a pixel art chad, but I've come a considerable distance since the start of this month. I'm not going to be stopping anytime soon. Do let me know what you think though, I'd love to get some feedback. If you reckon I did good, then maybe consider smashing that like and subscribe button. Maybe. Don't go anywhere though, because I've got a lot more shit I'd like to proverbially get off of my chest. But first, I'd like to thank Nordwalker for sponsoring this video. I said I'd like to thank Nord... <laughs> Somebody say Nordwalker? You ever heard of NordVPN? Of course you have, it's fucking everywhere. Well brought to you by the same lads comes the new lightning quick encryption service, NordLocker. <sighs> you see, before I started using NordLocker, I had some pretty important shit just floating around on the cloud. I'm talking tax file number, passwords, pictures of my passport, driver's license, dick. I was like, eh. I'm sure it's all secure up there, they encrypt their shit. It's not like old mate Kev that works at the cloud storage company has a back door to any of my personal files or anything. F Big Kev from OneDrive ain't touching this shit. All your data gets locked up using elliptic curve. <laughs> Loop dip curve cryptography. Now that's a big word, so that must mean your data is big safe. It's also user friendly as hell. I doubt even my great grandmother would have trouble using it. Don't quote me on that though. You just go, ooh, 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 and you're all safe. So go to nordwalker.net forward slash randall and use the coupon code holiday sale 3y to get 81% off of a three year plan. Anywho, since all the normies would have clicked off this video by now, it's time to have a little heart to heart with all of you sick lads who are still watching. 
2019 has been an absolutely hectic year. Never thought I'd be here doing this, but uh, here we are, and it's all thanks to you. I've got massive plans in mind for 2020, and I can't wait to get started on them with you all. I've been on holidays for the past couple weeks, so I apologize in the delay for getting this video out. But with that being said, I'd love to thank all this month's top Patreons, which were Game Dev Goose, Amin, Philip, Spiral404, Heatblaze, Clemtime, Zach Potter, Tor A, Matthew Carr, Azareel, Tommy in 3D, and Andrew Calder. Massive thanks to all you other lads who are coming across the screen as well at the moment. I'm extraordinarily grateful for all the support. I wouldn't be able to keep doing this if it weren't for all of you lovely people. And of course, thank you to everyone else for watching this video. I'll see you all in the new year, and I hope you have an excellent day.